Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Will you pray with me, please? Compassionate God, you have compassion enough for all. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Jesus, out of your compassion for us, you invite us to come away with you to a place of rest and quiet. Help us to say yes and then be able to come away with you. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Lord, out of your compassion, you care for those who are harassed, helpless, and lost. Sometimes we feel that way ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for all of us. Lord, in your compassion, teach us to follow you, to trust you, to love you, to love as you love. Lord, in your compassion, feed us who are hungry, physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Lord, in your compassion, heal us in the places that we need to be healed. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Lord, in your having compassion for us, teach us to have compassion for others, as you do. Help us to show compassion in action the way that you did. And remind us when it is time to come away with you for quiet and rest. Lord, in your mercy, have compassion for us. Lord, in your having compassion to us, teach us how to approach you, knowing that you always welcome us. Teach us how to speak openly and honestly with you, and listen as you guide us and correct us. 
teach us how to pray, even as we pray the prayer that your Son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debts. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power. Won't you join me in a reading from Philippians chapter 1, verses 21 through 30, and it reads, For to me, living is Christ, and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in your faith, so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction, but of your salvation. And this is God's doing. For he has graciously granted you the privilege, not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well. Since you are having the same struggle you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be unto God. Each day I'll do, Each day I'll do a golden deed, a golden deed. By, helping those by helping those who are in need. Who are in need. My, life on earth My life on earth is but a span, is but a span. And, so I'll do and so I'll do the best I can. Life's evening sun, Life's evening sun. It's, sinking low. it's sinking low A few more days, A few more days. And, I must go. and I must go to meet the deeds, to meet the deeds that, I have done. that I have done Where there will be, Where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. To, be a child to be a child of God each day, God each day. My, life must shine. my life must shine along the way I'll sing his praise while the ages roll roll. And try to help help some troubled soul Life's evening sun is sinking low A few more days days. and I must go go to meet the deeds deeds that I have done done. Where there will be be no 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 setting sun While traveling down, while traveling down, life's weary road, life's weary road. I'll try to live, I'll try to live. Some travelers low, some travelers low. I'll try to change, I'll try to change. Each night today, each night today. Make roses bloom, make roses bloom along the way. Life's evening sun, life's evening sun. It's sinking low, it's sinking low. A few more days, a few more days. And I must go to meet the deeds, to meet the deeds that I have done, that I have done. Where there will be. Where there will be no setting sun, no setting sun. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're visiting Philippians chapter 1, 21 to 30. This is one of just my favorite um, letters in the Bible. Um... It is written by Paul, they believe. Um, Many of the letters are uh, considered 
written by somebody else using Paul's name. Uh, that was common in those days. But this one is genuinely Paul. Um, and it's a beautiful letter. It is considered a letter of love. Um, the reason for this is many of the churches that Paul had written to were churches who, and they're all starting out. They're, they're trying to figure things out. And they, their letters helping them do that. Their letters giving them instructions on how to be a church, on what to do to be a church, um, how to behave, uh, some to behave, uh, you know, stop doing these things. Um, but this one is to the church in Philippi and they are behaving. And so um, they've got it figured out pretty well. And it's one of uh, Paul's favorite churches. Uh, it's a very small church, a very poor church. Uh, it's the first church he planted in the Europe area. And uh, it's one of his favorite churches. And so it's a very different letter because he doesn't have to send a lot of instructions. And um, we get a chance to see a little bit more about who Paul is. We get a chance to hear his feelings, his emotions, and it just happens that it's coming from uh, Paul and why he's in jail. And so, you know, he's stressed, I'm sure, um, not in the best place emotionally. And so we get to see and hear a little bit more of Paul rather than the instructor or the minister as far as how do we be church. Uh, so it's a beautiful letter uh, in so many ways. And so it's a really refreshing um, love letter uh, from, from Paul. And so that's why I enjoy it so much. And it has so much to tell us in this world. Um, in this letter, Paul uh, is writing to them and he expresses some anxiety here. He is battling within himself with how hard it is uh, to do the work he does. He is saying, gosh, it, it, it'd just be easier to, to go ahead and die. Uh, some people have said, is he thinking about suicide? Does he know it? how? How does he have this choice here? Is he going to kill himself? Is he going to do something bad so he can be killed? But no, that's not what scholars think. Uh, it's just that, you know, he's faced this so many times that they he's he's just playing with the thought of what happens here and the reality of gosh, it'd just be easier to be with Jesus. And I think many people, I think many people in this world have that thought. It would just be easier to be with Jesus and, and have my reward, if that's how you view it, or be at this peaceful place where there are none of these stresses. Um, and I think a lot of people, uh, at least where I'm at, a lot of people view faith as that, as how, how do I get this reward? But Paul, so he's talking himself through that. You know, why do we do this work and when do we get this reward? And he comes around to the fact that he, he has work to do, this fruitful labor. And so what is fruitful labor? And that's very important as we look over the life and the love of Jesus Christ. And I think so many people miss that today in Scripture. And that is what Jesus' life was about, was the fact that we are called to fruitful labor in this world. You know, it being faithful, following Jesus Christ is not about, do I get to heaven um, at the end of this? It is not all about, you know, salvation is not all about am I going to heaven or going to hell it truly is about how do I live in this world Jesus time and time again calls us to bring the kingdom of heaven to earth 
that is what we are called to. Not, am I personally getting to heaven? But to be a part of this wonderful thing, to help make sure all people have food and medical care and love, to make sure that you, do you personally know that God loves you unconditionally? Always. And that is what Paul is wrestling with. Oh, I'm supposed to spread the word of God. I'm supposed to let everyone know that Jesus was here on this earth and died and rose again. How do I do that? This is hard work and people are persecuting me and oh my goodness. And then he remembers, oh, this is fruitful work. It's not just about, it is not just about, do I get to go be at the feet of Jesus for eternity? It is about making sure I do my best to help people understand that, to help them understand there is a better way of life better than persecuting others, better than harming others, better than holding on to everything I can get, better than not loving others, but loving myself only. And Paul has to talk himself through that. He is an amazing person. He had this amazing transformation moment. He has been gifted over and over again by God as he walks through this. He has been protected by God in some of the worst times you can imagine as he does this ministry. But he's also gone through some very hard times. And he needs strength too. And somehow this tiny little church that's very poor has been his strength in this. They are the ones that have somehow come through for him. And that's so true in life. You know, people oftentimes look for these big, amazing happenings. We look for that wonderful transformation moment where lights flash from the sky and things happen and we can but for me the true transformations of people the long lasting transformations the things that sustain us the most in this world oftentimes come from the most unlikely quiet, sacred moments with the people you would never expect them from. The poor, tiny church in a far off area that's kind of disconnected from some of the other area was the one that sent someone to care for him that gave resources that they really didn't have, gave him an outlet to write a personal letter that he probably needed to write. That was a blessing that Paul needed. It was a true love letter. A letter that said, God sustained me with things I didn't even know that I had, that I needed from the least likely source there was. The least of these. Because when we get to the least of these, we receive. <music>
we travel through the desert, storms beset us by the way. But beyond the river Jordan lies a field of endless day. Farther on, still go farther, count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never, it is better farther on. Oh, my brother, are you weary from the roughness of the way? Does your strength begin to fail you and your vigor to Farther on, still go farther, count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never, it is better farther on. At my grave, oh, still be singing, though you weep for that's gone. Sing it as we once did sing it. It is better farther on. Farther on, still go farther. Count the milestones one by one. Jesus will forsake you never. It is better farther on. It is better farther on. Sometimes it doesn't seem like enough. This table before me doesn't seem very big, but the table that we are joining at right now isn't just this place, but it's where you are too. It's not just this bread and cup that I have before me, but it's the bread and cup that you have before you, even if it's not physical, but maybe just in your mind. This is a big table, my friends. And as we come, we realize that God's realm is made of small amounts given with great love. And in that spirit, we come to the table now. If we were in a physical church, we might break off a small piece of bread and take a small, either a sip of a, a juice cup or dip our bread in the juice and come away with a little bit of that. If indeed we were able to eat and drink some people aren't. But online, when we first began Disciples Net Church in 2010, in November, we made the decision that we're not sure if coming to the table this way is enough. But for some people that never get a chance to have communion, we hope that even though it's not that grand feast, that perhaps it would be enough. We've had people from countries around the world sharing this bread and this cup together as a way of remembering. We have had people, even in their last days, last hours, share communion this way with their families in ways that they could never have done before. Let me give a special welcome to those of you who Maybe in your last days, your, your time may be short, and you know that. Not all of us know how much time we have, but some know that it's not much. It may not seem like enough. But friends, let me tell you that committed to God, as we've heard today, little things can go great ways. And in the kingdom of God, that realm of God, it doesn't take a lot that it indeed is good. Let us pray. 
Gracious God, we thank you for the people that are listening here. We thank you for their lives. We thank you for the hearts that they give to you. We ask that you knit together the hearts of each one that's listening here, separated by distance and time, but one at your table, one joined in your love, dear Lord. And God, we ask that you bless the bread and the cup, whether it's physical or in the mind of each of us gathered here, as we do it in love and we give our hearts to you, dear God. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. For on that last night, as Jesus was eating with his disciples, he took a loaf of bread, and after he had blessed it, he broke it and said to them, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, after they had finished eating, he took a cup. And said to them, this cup is the new covenant in my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's life and death. You tell the Lord's story until he comes again. Won't you eat now and drink and share the Lord? So when you feel like, wow, I hope the next life is better. I hope I get to enjoy the kingdom of God. Look around because the least little thing in your life may just be the kingdom of God right here on earth for you right now because we are to work for the kingdom of God here. And as, as we do that, the kingdom of God is feeding back into us. Amen.